tech family, like many of us, I'm spending a ton of time on webcam these days and I want to look good and professional. Plus, at my new studio in Arizona, I want to have the option of streaming live for you guys. Unfortunately, in every location, the lighting conditions are just crap for being on webcam. So, I want to buy a light to make me look better. But rather than just researching which light to buy online and hoping I research it correctly, I thought, let's just buy all of them and together we can discover which light is best. Seriously, in front of me, I have lights that cost 20 US dollars right up to setups that cost over 280. Now, the reason a good quality lighting source is so important is because of the way cameras work. They pick up light reflecting off you back at the sensor. Therefore, the quality of the light hitting you matters. More so for webcams because they're just crappy versions of larger cameras. They just don't have the optics of their larger brothers and are therefore far less forgiving in poorer lighting conditions. Let me introduce you to the contenders from lowest to highest price. And by the way, I was kind of exaggerating when I said every light. There are way too many to cover in a single video. So I selected a variety that includes some of the most popular cheap ones on Amazon, well-known brands and even some professional video lights. Links to all the lights and equipment will be in the description below. By the way, they are affiliate links, so I will get a small financial kickback if you do decide to purchase one, which would be nice, no pressure, as you'll be supporting the channel. First up is the cheapest of the bunch, the $20 Belkaga LED desk light. This light is highly recommended on Amazon. It's a simple ring light that you clip to a desk and is powered via a USB-A connection. You'll need a converter if you plan to use it with a laptop like a MacBook as they only support USB-C. I tend to avoid ring lights as I feel they don't look natural to the viewer. Light reflects off you in an unnatural ring rather than a shape like the sun. Now, if you don't have a desk that you can clip this light to, this one isn't for you as there are no other mounting points. The light has controls to set the brightness and color temperature. By the way, so that all these lights can be compared fairly, when the light is by color, i.e. you can make the light look warmer or cooler, I set the color temperature to be within the daylight range of 5000 to 6500 Kelvin. Note that the webcams I tested on do set their own white balance, so please ignore differences in the warmth of the light when you see my results. They're just straight out of the webcam recorded directly with no editing. Next up is the $39 video conference light kit from Kais. Aren't sure if that's how you pronounce it. This one comes with a stand and has an internal rechargeable battery, which is super handy as you won't need to have it plugged in to use it. Unfortunately, the stand doesn't go high enough for the light to be placed behind a laptop or monitor. You'll have to place it to the side of your computer. It does also come with a clip where you can clip the light on top of your laptop and the webcam can shoot through it. But I would absolutely avoid doing this because this part of your laptop's display is very delicate and you could damage it. Next is the $119 Loom Cube Edge Light. I absolutely hated this light. I found the desk mounted stand very hard to adjust. Also, none of the controls worked other than the power button, so I couldn't adjust brightness or color temperature. This is a highly reviewed light on Amazon, which once again makes me question the validity of the reviews on that site. Next, at $130 is the first of the two Elgato lights I tried, the Elgato Keylight Air. It sits on the desk rather than clamps to it. A couple of notes on Elgato lights. They are software controlled. The software works really well and is easy to set up. After setup, the lights use Wi-Fi to communicate to your computer. You can control the brightness and color temperature from their software. You can also use Elgato's Stream Deck to control them too. The negatives of these lights are that the stands are really tall, so you'll notice some black shadows around my eyes when using these lights as they are angled from a very high position. These lights are really designed for those using a desktop with a larger monitor. Also, I don't see a Linux version of their software available. If you do use Linux though, I was able to find some open source software that claims it can be used to control these lights. Honestly though, I do wish the lights had controls on them themselves so you didn't have to rely on the software. Next, at $139 is the GVM Bicolor 10-inch video light. GVM is a cheaper professional video light brand. This light is an LED edge diffuse light. The light comes in a kit with a desk clamp mount and can be powered by standard rechargeable MPF batteries or the included adapter. Time out. If you don't know what a diffuse light is, let me explain. These are lights that are designed so that when the light hits you, it is soft. That means it won't create harsh, overexposed spots on you. This mimics how you would look if you were out in natural sunlight. It looks more pleasing. 
Most of the lights on this list try to be diffused and some are more successful than others. Generally speaking, the larger the light, the more the light bounces around before it hits you and the more diffused it is. And that's why us YouTubers use lights with large softboxes on top. That brings me to my next light, the 200 US dollar Elgato Key Light. It's larger and brighter than the Key Light Air, which hopefully will help with better diffusion. The next two lights are really professional video lights that you can also use as webcam or streaming lights. Because of this, neither of these come with their own light stand. Professionals tend to own separate stands. I bought an impact desk lamp light stand to use with these, which adds a $35 cost to the price of these lights. I do want to say this though, no desk lamp or stand that came with any of these other lights came close to the quality of this impact one. The impact one was just so much sturdier and better built. Plus it supports both screw thread size that's used to screw on different lights. At $200 is the Generate Mini Moon 11 inch. This is a bicolor edge diffuse light that can be powered using standard MPF batteries or the included AC adapter. And at $249 is the Aperture Amaram P60X video panel light. If you don't know of the Aperture brand, it's pretty much an industry standard video light. Most large YouTubers use Aperture lights. Marquez has plenty in his studio, as do I. The ones we use are a lot larger and more costly than this entry level one though. Anyway, like most aperture lights, it feels high quality, plenty of attention to detail clearly went into this and it comes with a bunch of extras for mounting power and softening the light. This is important as it's an LED panel light, so the light isn't properly diffused unless you run it through the included softbox. This aperture light can also be controlled by their Sidus mobile app. Alright, so let's see how they perform. When it comes to the lighting itself, I'm going to simulate the two most common lighting conditions that cause problems for people using their webcams. First, an environment that is just too dark for a webcam to work effectively. You'll see the signs of this when your picture quality becomes super grainy as the webcam raises its ISO to try and compensate for the lack of light. Second, a background that is just too bright, causing exposure issues when either the subject, you, becomes too dark or the background becomes too bright and overexposed. This can happen when you are sitting with a window directly behind you. I'm going to test each light with different webcams. First, I'll test each light with the terrible 720 resolution webcam in my 2021 HP Omen laptop. This is equivalent to the worst webcam you'll probably have. After, I'll test each with a much better, higher resolution 1080 webcam in the MacBook Pro 16. I was also planning to test the lights using a pricey external webcam, the Logitech Streamcam. But as you can see, it kept becoming very overexposed, so I ended up dumping it. By the way, you can use much higher quality digital cameras as webcams, which as I mentioned, will be more forgiving of poorer lighting conditions. But for today, I'm focusing on something that is convenient and less expensive. Also, to make the test realistic, I won't be wearing any blotting powder. YouTubers and actors tend to wear this kind of makeup to reduce hotspots from light being reflected off their skin. That's because we end up sweating and the moisture reflects light back at the camera. Now, I don't think any of you guys wear this kind of thing when on webcam or live streaming, so I won't do it today. Finally, many of the lights have different settings. I did spend time to adjust each light to the best setting I could, so assume when watching that I've already done that. And funnily enough, for most of these lights, they were actually too bright, so I had to turn the brightness way down. Now, I'll be starting each set of tests with a baseline test with no external light at all. Here's the test of the light and too bright behind me on the HBO Max webcam. Here's the $29 Amazon light on full brightness. This is the K KS, Kias, I don't know how to pronounce it, video conference light. This is the Loom Cube. This is the Elgato Key Light Air. This is the GBM light. This is the Elgato Key Light. This is the Genray light. And this is the Aperture P60X. Here's a low light test of the HP Omens webcam. Here's the $29 Amazon light on lower brightness. Here's the KS video conference light. The Loom Cube the low light test. This is the Elgato Key Light Air. So this is the GBM light. 
This is the Elgato key light. This is the Genray light. This is the Aperture P60X. This is the baseline test of the MacBook Pro 16 with no light. Here's the Bacata clip ring light. This is the video conference light. This is the Loom cube light. Here's the Elgato key light air. So this is the GBM light. Here is the Elgato key light. The Genray on the MacBook Pro 16. This is the Aperture P60X with the brightness quite bright. The baseline test of the MacBook Pro 16 without any light. This is the Bacarda Clip Ring Light. So this is the video conference light. This is the Loom Cube Light. Here's the Elgato Key Light Air. Here's the GVM light. Here's the Elgato Key Light. The Genray on the MacBook Pro 16. And this is the Aperture P60X. So, what did you think? Personally, I thought the Generate was the clear winner. To my eyes, it looked the most natural, followed by the Aperture P60X and the Elgato Key Light. I personally would buy the Generate or Aperture over the Elgato Light as I like having the option of being able to adjust the brightness and color temperature on the light itself and not having to rely on software. Now, if you do want something cheaper, I just go for the $20 Belkaga LED Desk Light. It looked better than the more expensive Kais video conference slide, and honestly, in my mind, kind of on par with the far more expensive Loom cube light. By the way, why is that called a cube light? It's round. Anyway, as I said, I hated that one. If you really want something in between price-wise, I'd get the GVM bicolor light over the Elgato key light air. I felt it looked a little better and it can be controlled without an app. Before I go, Obviously, there are other ways to make yourself look good on webcam. For example, just simply dressing nice and being well-groomed. Also, your background matters a lot. Make sure to have a clean, well-designed one. If you do want help designing a background, check out the online interior design company, Decorilla. They help design this background that you see behind me. I'll place a link to Decorilla below. And by the way, I am a co-founder of Decorilla, so that is a bit of a shameless plug. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Make sure to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, links below. Also, if you are feeling generous, try becoming a Patreon supporter. Honestly, it does help this channel remain completely independent, free of sponsors and with as little advertisements as possible. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.